the human being which is identified, the mind identified with the ego, believes it is lacking. That's where the incompleteness comes from. And therefore, that's what the special relationship is about, is, is to make a trade. It's like trading up an incomplete self for another self-concept or another image that is believed to be better. So that's where the gain seems to come in. You know, in other words, if you, if you're identified as being single and you have in mind this concept that it would be better to be a couple self rather than a single solitary self, then you see the advantage of the trade-up and therefore you will seek to find the coupled self. Mm -hmm. And basically that's what this whole world is, seek and do not find. It doesn't matter how many forms you look in to find a better form or a better concept. The whole thing is set up as like a giant trick so that you will forever, so to speak, in time terms, seek and do not find. And therefore, the, and the, the solution, of course, is to go within and find the love within yourself, which is only where the completion is. And, and the sooner you become disillusioned with this trick, then you, that's when you can find the fulfillment and the satisfaction and the completion. Because it is a, an attempt to trade a defective or lacking self for a better self. Kind of like, some of you have seen the movie Jerry Maguire, uh, where Renee Zellweger yeah. has the comment, you complete me. Mm -hmm. You can always tell that when you're watching that movie with, with metaphysical students, they all go, ah, uh, and the rest <laughs> of the audience goes, oh. <laughs> 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 you can tell. You can tell. You really want to see who's on the spiritual journey. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You know, it's, it's all based on the perception of, of the line, you complete me. Because, because clearly, clearly, clearly the teachings is that there, you don't need to seek outside yourself for a partner, a friend, a person, a situation or anything that will complete you. You have to find the completion within yourself. When we say within yourself, we, we're not talking about within the body, we're talking about within the mind. Because that's where the completion is. The completion is mind itself. Mind was created whole and complete, and when you get out into the fragmented images, that's where the problems start. So, ultimately what we're talking about is spiritual fulfillment, you know, must come, you, you have that mirroring, 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 and then as long as there seems to be a temptation for a form outcome, then that's where the, the wholeness is not, not fully experienced. Because wholeness is complete contentment. There is no sense of even bonding with another in that wholeness. And so that's where the final wisp of, of illusion has to be given up. So, he started feeling all this that was being reflected back to him that he valued. And he loved being with her, and yet it got to the point where, you know, he said, until another man <laughs> walked into the room and he would see her kind of turn and reflect, start to reflect what that man wanted. And then he got to the point where he was able to notice he didn't want another man to come into the room because of the competition aspect of there. As if she is one, he is one, two's company and three's a big crowd. <laughs> you know, and, and that was the, the sense where, where he was noticing perhaps that he wanted her all to himself. And again, that still has aspects of, of specialness to it until you come to realize that, that who I am, or the I am presence, is all, is all in all, and that there is no other. So, it's beautiful. These movies kind of really get to the nuances of, of really getting more and more to that point of cleansing the mind, purifying the mind, purifying the heart completely of, of specialness. And that's, 
the, the whole point of, of spirituality is, is to just sink deeper and deeper in the mind into a state of wholeness and completion which is in the mind. It's, there's no form to that state of mind. There's no form outcome. You can't get to a point where you go, aha, the perfect mate has arrived, or the perfect situation, whatever. You know, there's a great line in the Course where Jesus says, when you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. Why is that so? Why isn't there such a thing as a perfect form? Well, remember, form was made, remember the purpose that form was made for, was it was made in hatred. The world was made as an attack on God, a place where God can enter not. The form was made as the distractive device, as the hall of mirrors. And the spirit will use that form that the ego made as part of symbols to lead the mind more and more uh, into a state of, first through a disillusionment with the form, and then turning the mind inward to go completely inside, to completely within, to the kingdom of heaven, because it can only be found within. There is no form that, that reflects the kingdom of heaven, we could say, except the forgiven world, the Holy Spirit's perception of form. But the Holy Spirit sees the big picture, the Holy Spirit reflects, reflects that beautiful light of heaven onto the whole screen, onto all form. And so the big picture is, is what we could say fulfillment is in terms of waking up. Not a specific form. The specifics were made to deny the light. And whenever you think you've arrived at a specific where you go, got it, got it, finally achieved it, finally fulfilled it, you know, he says, you will notice that you will not be fulfilled. You, will, you may have a little glimmer of, finally got the thing that I wanted, but you will soon find there's a disillusionment after that, and then the ego will say, well, keep seeking. Uh, you just haven't found it yet. But it's not there. It's not there to be found. So, that's why a lot of times spiritualities are it's talked about in terms of renunciation. Renunci another word for renunciation could be emptying the mind of all false desires, of desires that were made to take the place of God. And it's really not so much a renunciation because everything that you seem to be renouncing on the spiritual journey, you don't want. Really. You don't, it has no value. It, it cannot be difficult to renounce that which has absolutely no value. It cannot be difficult to renounce that which can only hurt you. And so that's why there's no sacrifice in the journey. But as long as you believe in the ego, the ego will take every step inward that you make into your mind, it will see as a big sacrifice. What are you doing? Are you crazy? You're going to give up that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that, with the ego made that, and that, and that, and that, and that, as a way to distract the mind from coming inward and finding that fulfillment within. So it's really quite a, a beautiful opportunity, you know. Basically it's, the, the divine law is, is, as you sow, so shall you reap, and giving and receiving are the same, and what you give is what you get, obviously, because giving and receiving are the same. So if you're perceiving a relationship, and there seems to be one person of the couple that's a little more into bondage than the other, as you're saying, but if you bring it back to mind, you start to realize that that whatever is is reflecting, you know, is is coming from mind. It's just being acted out. And so, you know, once you once you start to say, oh, there seems to be a bit of a desire for a bonding, then that's part of the purging or the purifying that's going on, because the world that is perceived reflects what's in the mind. You know, prayers are always answered and the and the prayer of the heart is is mixed until it's pure, until it's unified. So that's why it's a kind of a mixed 
picture. There's some moments it's like, whoa, spectacular, you know, just, and there's others and it's like, ooh. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's flushing up that unconscious <laughs> desire, that unconscious death wish is getting flushed up and acted out sometimes, maybe like we've talked in the past in yeah. terms of anger or the expression of anger or something, and it's like, yeah. ooh, what's this showing me about myself? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's quite intense mirroring. But, but ultimately, you can't help but be grateful for that because in that sense, you know, the mirror is, is helping you uh, with whatever was pushed out of awareness. It's helping you become aware of it. And then, the more you become aware of it, the more you have that opportunity to really release it. To really face it and, and say, no, this is not my desire. I want peace of God or I want peace of mind more than this. And so, in that sense, the mirroring is, is serving that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to feel the gratitude of that. Mm -hmm. The movie um, s stated that really perfectly. Um, th as far as the reflection of mind goes, he said, haven't I, I can't remember how he put it, done everything possible to deter you from this continuing to come towards me? He said, yes. But you, some part of you must desire it, yeah. that, otherwise it wouldn't be happening. Yeah, right. that was it. You do see that it's not so much what seems to be in front of you that counts, yeah. but it's, it's what purpose am I holding on to in my mind? You know, that's the crucial question. Right. Because we're teaching what we would learn based on our purpose, so you know, many times people have been put in what seem to be dire situations or difficult situations or challenging and they thrive mm 